Okay, all right, dumb question number one. There were probably several dumb questions in this. What is stacks? Hell, we gotta start from the beginning. Right. There's no such thing as a stupid question. We just boil it back, like, what's a blockchain, right? And you can go, anybody's listening to this can go into like a super deep dive here, but I'm just gonna give like the 30,000 foot view, where one of the major, I think, breakthroughs of blockchain in general, like blockchain technology and Bitcoin, right, is it solves, right? I'm gonna use a terminology, but let's, everybody knows this reference, like you can right click save anything on the internet, right? Any file, you can duplicate it immediately. So because of this, there's like no scarcity online or like just in computers in general, right? That's like one of the major breakthroughs of the internet. One of the major breakthroughs of computing in general is like, hey, you can make as many copies as long as you have enough storage as possible. So that's what enables like the giants like Spotify, right? They can create kind of one song and you can stream it to a billion people, right? Because it's infinitely replicable. So... That's amazing, but where it's not great is when it comes to money, right? You don't want people to just like right click save your dollar bill. So what blockchains did is they solved that problem where it's like, okay, how do we keep track of one? Like what is like a real, what is the original asset, right? And how do we track like where it's moving? So two people can't own the same thing at the same time, right? You can't, it's called the double spin problem. There's a lot of other problems that Bitcoin solved. Um, of like how we come to consensus about who actually owns what, but that's what blockchains do. So the chain itself in a block, let's just assume like I'm trading with Phosphorus and Plutus and Rayon, and I send something to Plutus, right? And then there's a bunch of transactions that happen, say like every 15 minutes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bundle all those transactions together and put them in what's called a block. And then you're gonna have supercomputers all over the world basically secure this block, okay? So what's happened is in the Bitcoin ecosystem, they were kind of the first and they're the most secure, right? They've been running the longest. It's the most like battle tested by a long shot. And because of its kind of, um, it's called like proof of work mechanism, it's just the most secure chain, right? But what it's really, really good at is for us sending transactions to one another and making sure that we have an up-to-date ledger of where, who holds what money over time, right? So that's kind of like Bitcoin blockchains and a, Short and sweet version. Okay, it solves that problem of scarcity. Now, um, there was this other development on Ethereum where they're like, they kind of expanded on this idea of like, okay, Bitcoin is great for sending money, but you can't do what much else with it, right? It's a really secure way to send money. So Ethereum's kind of like interesting evolution was, okay, what if we made basically programs like this? So it was called smart contracts. And all a smart contract is, it's just like a program um, or a line, a couple lines of code that's decentralized, meaning anybody can call into it. So you'd be like, okay, how is that different than like regular programs? Say like you log into Facebook, right? Um, Facebook, all of those say algorithms and all the code that's behind the scenes, Facebook controls, right? And they can change it and they can update it at any point in time. And the only way you get access to it is if you log into Facebook, right? And then there's like a ton of internal code that's going on that we don't have access to, right? Like I can't change someone else's password, right? Like that is localized to Facebook. So in a decentralized or smart contract, it's basically a code base that anybody can call into at any time. And it's immutable, it can't be changed. So that gives security, it's a double-edged sword, right? It gives security and also can like open up some exploits, right? Cause it's live in the wild. What was important about this is anybody can call into it. And like why this is actually a huge breakthrough and like why decentralized finance is broken into it, or like why it's so big and decentralized finance. And let's say like, you know, we have access to U.S. banks and like U.S. bank accounts. If you're from Indonesia, you don't have access to the banks that we have access to, right? You have to be an American citizen to have access to that or you even have to live in the same region or you got to have a certain address. What this allows is that anybody in the world with an internet connection has access to this program. So you could write a bank and anybody has access to it, right? So, and that's kind of what's happened with um, in this ecosystem. So two major things came out of this with smart contracts is you can write programs that anybody can call into and two kind of big ecosystems developed around that. One was decentralized finance, which makes sense because like we're using Bitcoin as a currency and we're using Ethereum as a currency. So one of the first use cases was currency and um, decentralized finance. And then the second big breakthrough was NFTs. 
Um, I'm gonna stop there if you have questions, but we can go down the whole like NFT rabbit hole and what NFTs are. But what's really important here is that they are only, you can only have NFTs if you have smart contracts. So Bitcoin, so you have these like two ecosystems and a bunch of other chains that are popping up. You know, um, Ethereum's had smart contracts in the very beginning. Bitcoin has never had smart contracts, right? It was just good for sending money. And so what's happening is Stacks came along and it's another chain, it's a layer one chain that uses Bitcoin to um, basically hash all its blocks. So secured by Bitcoin. So every transaction that happens on Stacks eventually ends up on the Bitcoin blockchain. So you get the security of Bitcoin, but Stacks also has its own smart contract language, which allows us to do things like NFTs on top of Bitcoin. Okay, so it's like a different currency on top of Bitcoin and, and the Bitcoin technology, that whole system. Yes, it is. It's also, you know, the, the goal of it is not necessarily to be a different currency on top of it, but to be a layer that enables smart contracts that are tied to Bitcoin and that you can eventually interact with, with Bitcoin. Um, so it's, it's gotcha. extending okay. the functionality of Bitcoin to smart contracts. So any, basically anything that you can do on Ethereum, you can do with stacks, which is then settled on Bitcoin and Bitcoin's scripting language is just, it's not robust enough to allow for smart contracts, which is, a feature, not necessarily a bug, because it was optimized for security. Whereas Ethereum was optimized for features and um, flexibility and being able to do, kind of do everything. Um, it both being a store of value, a way to send money around, but also a smart contract platform. The goal of Bitcoin was to be as secure as possible. And even Satoshi in the Bitcoin white paper alludes to other chains like stacks that could extend the functionality of bitcoin because bitcoin is just optimized for security gotcha and that's that's why uh for byzantium you specifically chose to work within the bitcoin uh ecosystem because of that safety that's there yeah i think there's a couple layers to that i mean you know byzantium i mean long-term vision right we do think like stacks gets extracted away, right? And you'll be like buying all these NFTs with actual Bitcoin or, you know, doing on Lightning, doing on everything. One of the major reasons for building here on stacks is like, we believe in Bitcoin, right? We also, we're not like Bitcoin maximalists by any means, clearly. Um, we own things on Ethereum as well. But if you're just going to look at the market total, right? There's more Bitcoin holders than anything else, right? So there's more users with a Bitcoin wallet than any any other chain um so that's kind of one of the major reasons yeah and in addition to that um you know one bitcoin is the most secure the longer that a chain is around the more secure it becomes and the um, the longer it is likely to be around that's something called the lindy effect uh which is kind of the longer something is around the more potential it has to be around for a longer time so with NFTs specifically, the attraction to like being able to secure them by on the Bitcoin chain is um, that is at least right now what seems the most likely to be around for the longest time. So if you want to secure your artwork for uh, the longest period of time possible, um, then you would want to tie that to the Bitcoin chain. Whereas if you tie it to Avalanche or use Avalanche, which is another chain similar to Stacks, but uh, is its its own chain and secured by itself, you're kind of just counting on Avalanche being around and it's only been around for a year. And so there's a lot lower likelihood that that is around in 50 years than there is for Bitcoin. So we're talking about Bitcoin being the most secure uh, cryptocurrency chain. Stacks is the smart contract that allows to program onto Bitcoin. Therefore, if Bitcoin is around, we know that your NFTs or whatever you're buying will also be around, which brings us into what is an NFT. So an NFT, in my mind, right, is a non-fungible token, which means there could only be one of them, right? Am I right on this so far? 